2021 has been a great year for Turo. Airbnb of car rentals, and that's called Turo. 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 From announcing an IPO later this year to doubling their demand during the current rental car shortage, they're becoming the go-to option for tens of thousands across the country. And the loser in this story? Rental car companies. For more than 90 years, car rental companies didn't have to worry about disruption in their industry. However, this is not the case anymore. That's when Turo comes in. Today, we'll learn how a company named Turo offers a convenient alternative to rental cars and how it's ruffling some feathers in the process. What is Turo? If you're into cars, chances are you've heard of Turo. For those who haven't, Turo is a peer-to-peer -peer car company that allows you to either rent cars from strangers or rent your own for profit, turning your car into an asset. Turo's success stems from disrupting the rental car industry. They've basically become a rental car company without owning a single car. Through their app, they simply connect host and renter, and their prices tend to be significantly lower than those from the rental car giants. The problem. So what's the problem? Because it argues it's not a rental car company and thereby does not pay the fees they would have to pay otherwise, Turo is able to undercut rental companies on pricing, allowing hosts to pocket between 80 and 92.5% of transactions, and still make a profit. Logically, this has angered rental car giants, who've wasted no time taking legal action to stop Turo from taking over their industry. Their efforts have ranged from opening lawsuits in more than 30 states nationwide, to proposing bills that would regulate and tax Turo and other peer-to-peer -peer car companies as rental car companies. They argue that if a company is profiting from renting cars, regardless of who owns them, it must be taxed as a rental car company. Otherwise, they would have an unfair competitive advantage. In fact, according to Bloomberg Tax, Turo dodges state, local, and airport district requirements, including excise taxes that add as much as 40% to the rental rates charged to customers. For example, if you wanted to rent a 2019 Porsche through Turo, you would pay this much for a two-day rental, fees included. However, if you rented the same car through Enterprise, Turo's main opposition, you would pay this much and an insane amount in fees for a two-day rental. As you can see, the deal breaker is Enterprise's extra fees. Due to the numerous taxes rental car companies are required to pay by law, they charge these fees to cover insurance and vehicle registration costs, among others. Seems like a no-brainer, right? Well, with such big differences, it's not hard to imagine why rental giants feel at a disadvantage. In Turo's defense, rental car giants tend to conveniently forget the huge government subsidies they get when asking policymakers to level the playing field. Turo's spokesman, Steve Webb, recently alluded to this point. Policymakers aiming at greater tax parity between car sharing and traditional rental models need to also account for the $4.25 billion in tax benefits granted to companies such as Enterprise and Avis. Airport Battle Airports are one of the main battlegrounds where rental car companies in Turo have clashed. This is largely because, for decades, these companies have paid billions of dollars every year to be able to operate in airports. Also, depending on the time of the day, renting on Turo can be significantly faster because there's no need to stand in long lines or wait for an employee to verify your documents. After a long flight, it's easy to see why many people prefer Turo. Rental car companies can't really compete with the convenience of going straight to a parking lot and hopping in your ride. Airports have sided with rental car companies' stance on Turo, ignoring rules and having an unfair advantage. Unsurprisingly, Turo's struggling to legally operate in airports. In fact, more and more airports have sued Turo and banned its operations until the company pays the substantial fees they charge rental car companies. In April, the Supreme Judicial Court rejected Turo's appeal on a ruling that banned the company from listing cars at Massachusetts Logan Airport. Massport, as it's also known, sued Turo for offering their service at the airport without a permit. This is just one of several legal spats Turo has faced against airports. It's not all bad, however, since the company has struck agreements with Denver and Tampa International Airports. The latter will now require Turo to pay 6.5% of its gross annual revenue on the premises. It's also worth noting that, besides money, airports criticize the increased congestion and traffic jams caused by Turo. Also, they point to increased safety threats due to thieves targeting Turo cars in airport parking lots. This is because some hosts like to leave the keys inside their vehicles for convenience. Turning up the heat. 
The rental giants have had some success with their court efforts to regulate Turo in some states. These states include Arizona, Hawaii, Maryland, Oklahoma, and Florida. In most of those, Turo must pay between 6 and 8% in state sales taxes. This is no small feat, and it may be an indication of what's to come. With ongoing legal efforts against Turo in more than 30 states, it may become tougher for Turo's business model, which relies on transaction fees charged to both host and renter to thrive. It's simple. The more Turo pays in state taxes and airport permits, the more it'll cut into their profit margins, and thus potentially force them to increase transaction fees, which could push renters and hosts away. However, Turo's CEO, Andre Haddad, is adamant this won't be the case. Here's what he had to say on the matter. As you could see, Andre is optimistic on the legal front and doesn't seem phased by rental car giant Enterprise and its army of lawyers. Only time will tell who will prevail in this battle and how it will affect consumers and hosts alike. Outlook Like Airbnb, Turo will remain engaged in legal battles for the next few years. The company's ability to adjust their business model to cope with regulations and still make a profit is something to keep an eye out for. Over the years, Turo has shown its willingness and capacity to find solutions to challenges. An example would be liability insurance, which Turo didn't provide for its customers until 2017. The company partnered with Liberty Mutual to put to bed safety concerns and offer $750,000 in third-party liability insurance. This was an important step to comply with state laws, as rental car companies ramp up pressure on lawmakers to regulate Turo. Conclusion Turo has disrupted the rental car industry and has caught a lot of heat from several parties as a result. While the company has had its up and downs on the legal front, it remains to be seen whether Turo's optimism remains or if it'll have no choice but to yield the pressure from rivals like Enterprise. One thing is certain, the rental car companies won't go down without a fight. The last thing they want is to end up like the taxi industry, which has pretty much become an afterthought when it comes to ride hailing, thanks to market players like Uber and Lyft. Over to you now. Do you think consumers will no longer enjoy Turo's low prices due to regulation? And most importantly, do you think rental car companies will succeed in crushing Turo's business model? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel where you'll get business, investing, and finance content. After doing that, give yourself a pat on the back and carry on with your day. Cheers!